you should have pulled up your your uh, documents pertaining to graphing. And just to let you know what they look like, they're on the post page and they look like uh, somewhere in here. Where did I put them? There it is, 6.6 .6 handouts. Looks like these right here. Okay, so make sure that you print these out. You should have them printed out for today because I told you to print them out Friday and I can't remember. I don't know if we even got started on it. I think we had homework questions. I can't remember. But this is what we're going over today. Okay, but I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and take my camera and just put these out like that. I'm not going to do that. Okay, because to me, that's not teaching. That's just presenting and I don't do that. But what I will do is I will go over everything that's on these pages. Once again, OK, so therefore what I would do if I was you is put this beside your notebook and follow along with your notebook and rewrite some of the stuff that I do. So that way you'll have double the information. And that's just what I'm going to do. OK, all right. Now in graphing. And I'm going to tell you something. I have found in my years of teaching that graphing is next to word problems and fractions. As people just basically season up. Or don't want to do it or. I really hate graphing. OK, and the reason that is. Is it's because of the way it was presented and nobody knows that better than me. Because when I was in Southwood and I had the worst teacher ever conceived for algebra. She ruined my math. My math career after the seventh or eighth grade. I can't remember if it was seventh or eighth grade. And uh, it was all the way it was presented. And I got my revenge. I had a few extra refreshments at a Mexican restaurant near the house. And I told her after I had a few of those refreshments in me, I told her that she was the reason I became a teacher. And she said, well, oh, isn't that sweet? And I said, no, you didn't take it the right way. I said, I became a teacher because you were by far the worst teacher I've ever had in my entire academic career. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I said, well, I just thought you wanted to know. And I know that was awful, but it was the truth. And I want you to think a minute. If a person and she taught for like 50 years, I mean, she was she was terrible. Even my sister, my sister's the white sheep. I'm the black sheep and my sister is the white sheep and she studied all the time. She'd be in her room till three o'clock in the morning studying. And she made all A's and B's. The, the only C my sister ever made was in this woman's class. And uh, she was terrible. And I know I know I shouldn't have said that, but it was the truth. So a lot has to do with the way that something is presented to you. So with that being said, what is graphing? Well, there's two parts of graphing. I'm going to put graphing up here. There's two parts. There is the physical act of graphing. Using the three methods. And those three methods what I call the chart plot method. The intercept method. And the build and line method. OK, that's one that's 
one half of graphene. The other is properties and rules. Okay. Slope, calculating slope. Delta Y over Delta X, which is equal to Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X of 2 minus X of 1. 2, the point slope equation. Three, parallel and perpendicular. And four, how to basically read a graph. And that's graphing. Okay, now what I do is I break up and 6.6 .6 is graphing. All right, so I just get it off by itself and I say, okay, now we're going to go over graphing. And that's why I give you this handout. That's why I give you this set of handouts. So even if you miss a day of graphing in my class, which will be today and Wednesday, then you got the notes here to back it up. I know, I'm a bastard. I cover all of them. I cover all those excuses. So we're going to go over this today, or most of it, and we're going to go over this Wednesday. That's my plan. Now, when you're talking about graphing by chart plot, that's the old method of y is equal to 2x minus 4. And of course, you take your red, you take your red marker and you say, Y has to be by itself. Now that's in pink, so that means that's important. If Y is by itself, you can use the chart plot method. And all you do is draw a chart. Ninety percent of the time, I'm just going to pick the same numbers. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Ninety percent of the time, I'm going to pick those five points. Why? Because keep it what? What's the KISS method? Keep it what? Are y'all, can y'all hear me? Are y'all there? Simple. Thank you. Keep it simple. So why do I pick negative, zero, and positive? Well, I pick these numbers because they're small. I pick negative, zero, and positive, so I see both sides of the origin. So I pick those because they're simple. 90% of the time, if you walk up to me in trig and they tell me to graph whatever in trig or calculus, I'm going to pick those five points unless it's a fraction. And then I'll pick multiples of the denominator, which are on this page right here. If I get y is equal to one half x plus four, I pick negative four, negative two, zero, two, and four. If I get one third x minus two, I pick negative six, negative three, zero, three, and six. If I get one fourth x plus one, these are all examples. I just made them up. Negative eight, negative four, zero, four, and eight. I pick multiples of the denominator. These are just examples that I showed you what to do if you had a fraction right there and you pick multiples of the denominator. In other words, count by the denominator. If it's a two, negative four, negative two, zero, two, and four. If it's a five, negative 10, negative five, zero, five, and 10. And what that does, it cancels out the fraction. You just like to work with fractions and then that's your, that's your chain and whips. If you like to do that, knock yourself out. All right, so here we go. Two, 
Say again. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was gone for a little bit there. Yeah, my what power happened? Went out. You my out? power went out for a second, and then my internet like would not reconnect forever. It took hey, so Mr. long. Hey, Mr. Brinkman, you need to pay your light bill now. <laughs> Two times zero Priority minus one four. Message coming in on Two channel. times one minus four. Two times two minus four. Well, Miss Hatton, she just she must be in a ditch somewhere. She she not even here. We missed Miss Hatton. All right, so that's negative four minus four is negative eight. Negative two minus four is negative six. Zero minus four is four. You starting to see a pattern? Negative eight, negative six, negative four. I bet this next one's going to be negative two. Two minus four is negative two over there. And I bet this next one's going to be zero. Four minus four is zero. And there's your points. Line them up. Negative two, negative eight. Negative one, negative six. Zero, negative four. One, negative two. Now, of course, it's better if you have if you have graph paper. And your five points line up. There's your line. Now, most of y'all, I bet you if I asked you to raise your hand, which I, you don't have to, I bet you all of you remember doing this. OK. Why do I pick five points? Well, I pick five points so you don't mess up any. If you mess up one or two out of five points, you still can get the right answer. Five points make sure you get the correct answer, even if you mess one of them up. The other reason I use five points is because this method of graphing is used for nonlinear later on. Nonlinear means curves. Okay. In other mathematics, you use this method right here to plot points on a curve. You don't use the other two methods. All right. That's how you use the chart plot method. Now, a lot of people say, well, Hubert, how do I know which one to use where? Well, the directions. I'm going to put this in red. The directions will tell you which method to use. Unless it, meaning the directions, just say graph. If the directions just say graph, that means you can use any method you want. OK, so if it just says graph and that's it. Then <clears throat> you can use any method. Well, how do I know what it's Well, it'll say graph using in this case. I put on your handouts right here. Right there. What will the directions say? The directions will say graph by using ordered pairs or graph by using coordinates. So you need to highlight those two words right there. And that's what the directions will say. Graph using ordered pairs, graph using coordinates, graph using points. It might say graph using points. OK. So let's do intercept and 
And the directions will say for the intercept method, it'll say graph using what? Intercepts. That's what the directions will say. When do you use intercept method? You use the intercept method when Y is not by itself. You use the intercept method, pin, that means you need to highlight it because it's important. When Y is not by itself. Well, Hubert, what if I don't, what if I just solve it for Y and do it my own way? Well, then you'll get it wrong on the test and you'll get it wrong on the homework because they're looking for the intercepts. They're not looking for points that you make up. So if you choose, and write this down, if you choose to not use the intercept method on a homework question or a test, and you get it wrong, am I going to change it? That means I want y'all to answer. That's not rhetorical. If you don't use the method, that I'm not going to change the answer. I'm not going to give you points. Okay. The whole purpose of having a toolbox is that different tools are used for what? Different things. You don't use a screwdriver to drive a nail. You don't use the first method to do the intercept method or a problem like the intercept method. Here is what you will see for the intercept. It'll say graph using the intercept. 2X plus 3Y is equal to 12. That's what it'll say or it'll say X plus Y is equal to 6, or it'll say 2X plus Y is equal to 3. In other words, Y is not by itself. So the first thing you do is you draw a big table. And you put X intercept right here. And Y intercept right here. Now, here is the rule that you need to learn for intercepts. When you want to find the X intercept, you plug in zero for what? For Y. When you want to find the X intercept, you plug in zero for what? I'm sorry. When you want to find the Y intercept, you plug in zero for what? I'm I'm just not getting to through to y'all today. What what's up with that? X. Was, thank you. I appreciate the the interaction, Miss Cersei. You're welcome. The rest of y'all are weaned on a pickle. <laughs> Now, is this true the rest of your academic career? Yes. Is it true in trig? Yes. Is it true in calculus? Yes. Is it true in biology? Yes. Is it true in physics? Yes. Is it true in economics? Yes. Is it true in marketing? Yes. Is it true in accounting? Yes. No matter where you go, if you want to find the x-intercept of a graph, you plug in zero for y. If you want to find the y-intercept of a graph, you plug in zero for x. Now that's what you need to learn from this second method. It's what I just highlighted. Now you put the formula, the equation, under what you just wrote. Now watch what I do here.
Does anybody notice what I did with the equation and the point? Anybody see anything I did, how I arranged it? You all know what the word Q is? Q-U-E, you know what that is? I think it's Q. I can't remember how you spell it. You know what a Q is? Q U. Yeah. What is a Q? Sort of like a weighting, like a line, like a weight line. Yeah. Well, it's a Q is is in in teaching is I'm trying to get you to say something. Oh, that way. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying. I'm doing that again, y'all. What what do you notice about the way that I arranged? the equation in respect to the point. The y is under the zero and x exactly. is under the zero. Exactly. Whatever, whatever I'm plugging in, I lined it up under the zero. It makes things easier that way. Now, there are other ways to do this. Some of you may have had a very good algebra teacher that showed you to cover up the term with your finger and solve it. Is that a good way? Yeah. Some of you were taught to put a big zero here. That's fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm showing you from someone who's never seen this before. Okay, I always teach the bottom of the barrel. I always teach from somebody it's never seen it before. So if you've got a quicker way of doing it, fine. Now I'm going to draw a blue line straight down and the blue line straight down. Now all you do is plug and what? Plug and chug, Hubert. Thank you, plug class. Chug. Appreciate it, Mr. Brinkman. 2x plus 3 times parentheses equals 12. 2 times parentheses plus 3y is equal to 12. So I'm going to take my pink marker and I'm going to plug in a 0 right here and a 0 here. And what does that do to that term? Well, it eliminates it. That's why you put your finger over it. It works the same way. And here we have 2x is equal to 12, x is equal to 6. Three y is equal to 12, y is equal to what? And now you plot those points. So I take my handy dandy graph. My x intercept is one, two, three, four, five, six. My y intercept is four. I draw a line. How can you check it? Well, I always use x is equal to one. Somebody tell me why I use x is equal to one. There's two reasons I use X is equal to one for a check. Anybody want to give me one of those reasons? Well, I'm one I've already sure used zero. Huh? I'm not sure of the reason. It's keep it simple. Why did I pick one? Easy math. It's the easiest number to do anything. It's simple. Besides zero, it's the easiest number. And I've already used zero, so I can't use zero. So plug and chug. <clears throat> Two times one plus three Y is equal to 12. And that's going to be 10 thirds. 10 thirds is equal to three and one third. 
So at one and 3.3, what am I I'm supposed to hit what? The line. So one and one, two, three, 3.3 .3 is right there. So it does check. And that's how you check. Sorry. That's how you check to see if your line is working. And that's how you do the second method. Now, again, out of you have to have 101, I think, to be in this class. Y'all should have gone over this in 101 or Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 if you come out of high school. You should have seen this before, and you should have seen Method 1 before. Okay, because that's stuff they teach basic high school algebra. There's method one, and there's method two. Now we're going to do method three. Method three, a lot of people like to use method three, and what does it say in the directions? Method three probably says, Graph using the slope and y-intercept. Graph using the slope and y-intercept. I don't have it on the handout. Graph using the slope and y-intercept. That's what the directions will say. And yes, it's best to use when Y is by itself. And I tell students, even though you can do fractions with the first method, you know, using these examples, multiples of the denominator, I suggest students, if you're not told what method to do and you have a fraction, in the graph, this is the best method to use with a fraction. OK, so how do you use it? Well, usually Y is by itself or you have to get it by itself. So let's just make up one. Y is equal to negative. 3X plus 4. OK, so here they give us y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. There's no math involved. If you plug in 0 for x, you're going to get your y-intercept. 0 for x gives us 4. So our y-intercept is 4. So you're going to pull out the y-intercept. 0, comma, 4. That's called the y-intercept. And we just learned in method 2, that the y-intercept, you plug zero in for x, you get the y-intercept. Well, what's three times zero? Zero, what's zero plus four? Four. So the y-intercept is always gonna be this number right here, because when you plug in zero, the zero cancels that x term out. Second thing you're going to look for one message coming in on secure channel. is the trace line. The trace line is a real light colored line that basically is in the direction of the sign of the slope. So a positive is left to right up. A negative is left to right what? Down. So in this case, we have a negative. So I'm going to take my handy dandy orange highlighter. And that negative tells us left to right down. And now the last thing is three vertical over horizontal. In this case, three over one. Three vertically over one horizontally. 
Now what do we do? Well, that's all you got to do to start this problem. Now we're going to graph the y-intercept. So I'm going to take my pink pen and my y-intercept is 0, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Plot your y-intercept. Now I don't have a pencil. If I had a pencil, I would use it here, but I don't have one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a yellow marker and I'm going to barely draw a trace line left to right down. Now I can draw it at a 45 degree angle. I can draw it at a 60 degree angle. I can draw it at a 30 degree angle. I don't care. So I'm just drawing about a 45 degree angle. And there's a dashed yellow line. You can make it lighter than that. As long as you can see it, that's all that matters. Now you plot your points, three vertically and one horizontally. So three vertically, I'm going to do this in blue. Three vertically, one, two, three, and one horizontally. How did I know to go to the right? Because the trace line is going left to right like this. So my line is going like this. Okay, go three up. Go three up. Go three down. And there's your line. And once you draw the line, if you drew the trace line in pencil, you can erase the trace line. And that's building a line. Now, how many of you raise your hand and keep it up so I can see it? How many of you have seen these three methods before? Raise your hand and keep it up. Yeah, I know more of y'all have seen it than just one person. Wow. Y'all haven't seen these before. Wow. Okay, Mr. Cersei, you can put your hand down. So let me talk to Mr. Henry or somebody that does talk. And uh, where is Mr. Hubbard and Mr. Henry? Y'all have not seen this before. Okay, they're not talking to me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here. Okay, Mr. Hubbard, have you seen this material before? I've seen I've seen um, like that type of graph, but I've never seen vert or horizon like written like that or anything like that. Okay, so you haven't seen all three of them? No, sir. Okay, which one have you seen? The first one, the second one, or the third one? Um, I've seen one, maybe three, but definitely not two. Yeah, a lot of teachers don't teach two. I don't know why, because technically it's the easiest one. And there, there's a reason there's three methods. Each one of them has a distinct feature to use with certain type problems. We can't do the redneck disorder and just go, well, I don't want to learn it the second one, so I'm just going to do the first one and the third one. No, that ain't the way. That ain't the way I do it. So if you try the first one and the third one and, you, and you're doing a question on the test and it asks for the intercepts and you don't give them the intercepts, it will mark it wrong even if you, it's the right problem or the right graph, it'll mark it wrong. Okay, so what I want everybody to do tonight for homework as long as you uh, haven't, you know, some of y'all are still procrastinating. I'm sorry. Some of y'all haven't done your test. I don't know what the heck you're waiting on. I guess you're waiting on 1130 to get here. Um, I don't know what you're waiting on, but test is due tonight, correct? Yes or no?
Tonight at 11.59. Okay. So make sure y'all wait till 11.50 to start the test. Exactly 12 hours. Yeah. Make sure. Oh, yeah, it is. It's exactly 12 hours from now. <laughs> make sure you wait until tonight about 11.30 to start your homework and your test, okay? Any questions? Might as well. <clears throat> yeah, might as well. Just just wait till 11.55. <laughs> I'll just, mm. All right, let me shut this down and shut this down and shut this down. And where is my attendance? Oh, God, what a surprise. They logged me out. Probably logged me out here, too. Don't believe it. 155. Today is week nine. And Brickman Brown's not here. Bustos is here. Oh, shut it off. And shut the recording off.